Business Brain, episode 471 for Wednesday, August 2nd, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show where we take a topic or a couple of topics and run them through our business brains so that we can tune the, our business brains and make them a little better so that we can all keep living that charmed life. Sponsors for this episode include Miro.com slash podcast, where you get to go and get your first three Miro boards free forever. And also Zinch at financingthatworks.com, where you can get them to waive their $250 application fee just because you're a business brain listener. We'll talk more in depth about those two things in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. In Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. I'm excited about the show today. We've got a interview, Dave, that we haven't had uh, anyone on the show for a while, and this guy's, I think he's awesome. I, and, I say uh, we get uh, right to it, man. How about you? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. This will be a little surprise, but it's related to a recent episode that I was very popular, and you don't want to miss it. So let's get right in and uh, talk to David Morris. Hey, Dave. Uh, I'm sure you recall a few weeks ago we did a show that uh, I titled "Time to Learn Your ABDs." Uh, oh, I remember that? this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's about being different, and I, I got the uh, impetus to talk about this topic by a tweet by David Morris that. Um, and his thesis here is that, you know, in sales, being different is better than being better. And so the after we did the show, I reached out to David, you know, say, hey, thanks, you know, and uh, David's first response, like, you should have had me on the show. I could have talked about it. And so I'm like, <laughs> so I'm like all right. So um, I'm really happy to have David Morris here today. Uh, you've probably seen his, you know, we've linked his Twitter account uh, in the show notes. David is the president and CEO of Neo Insulation. Got a ton of followers on LinkedIn, ton on on Twitter uh, or X, as I have to force myself to call it. But uh, David, thanks so much for being here with us today. Man, I'm happy to be here. Uh, it always means something to me when uh, something I write goes out there, connects with somebody, and they want to have a conversation about it. So thank you guys for having me. Yeah, yeah, it really connected with me a lot. Um, and one of them that really uh, might be your first topic and and I don't I don't want to go over all of them just individually again but I because we did it a couple weeks ago but wh where did this impetus to to be different come from and and then follow up the then the motion to share it on X or Twitter with all your followers I you know I think like many things in life uh things emerge out of desperation uh, and, uh, you know, that, that would probably be the best explanation there. My, my sales story, kind of my sales journey started very, um, almost haphazardly. So I, I grew up in a home where my dad's, uh, more or less been in professional sales for, he, he owns some different businesses and then he, then he's been in professional sales for, uh, for most of my life. So I was uh, around that world, but my background was kind of varied in a bunch of different, uh, things. A lot of it, uh, training and development, public speaking related. And then I transitioned over into more uh, operations management type roles. And I, I took on this role at the company where I am now as a chief operating officer. And so my job was supposed to be really to kind of build out a sales team. I was going to figure out, I know how to lead people, didn't know exactly how to do that. And just by a series of circumstance, we had a distressed region of our company that uh, the guy who was leading that region and doing sales left. And I was at, uh, I really just started in my role trying to figure out, he was saying, shut down the region, shut down the region. Nobody wants to buy here. Hmm. And uh, and just to be bluntly honest, I, I didn't trust the guy, but I also didn't know that he was wrong. And so, uh, so I knew we were at this critical point where uh, if I hired the wrong salesperson there to take that role, then we would be dead in the water there. And so series of factors, I just decided, you know what, I'm going to start going and doing sales there. Mm -hmm. And so I, I had, like most people do, a, just a, a, a bunch of noise in my head about what that meant, you know, just kind of a list of expectations. And it was things like... Um, giving good pitches to people and, uh, and, you know, dressing well, being, being sharp and, 
throwing my CEO uh, or COO, sorry, I, I was at the time, a COO card around for people like, uh, let me tell you, I'm important. I'm the guy who can get things done for you. Uh, and, um, and then this other piece of like, you know, my father has always said, which I think is uh, absolutely true, that sales is all about relationships. But in my mind, what that yeah, what that meant to me was uh, I needed to be friends with people and we needed to go out to lunch and we needed to, you know, do all of kind of the cliche, you know, deals are done on the golf course uh, kind of thing. And, and there's certainly some truth to those aspects. But I, I went into this saying, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I know. Uh, that these are the things that are part of it. So in in the context in which I'm in, uh, sales is a lot of driving around and, and more or less like door knocking, kind of cold call door knocking. So um, I'm because the, the the buyer that we sell to very often is kind of a field level management person, not really a corporate office uh, person. And so uh, I'm driving around knocking on doors and talking to people, and I'm I'm kind of living out this like. Uh, uh, I'm the important person here to talk to you. Here's who you're dealing with, you know, uh, trying to dress nice, all, all this, yeah. all this stuff. And present yourself and, well. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, trying to get people to go to lunch. I mean, kind of all these things. And it's working on one hand, just the first few months, I'm figuring out that, uh, that the guy that told me this region was dead was wrong. I'm talking to a bunch of of like kind of solid prospective customers who have never heard of us, never heard of our product, interested, having good meetings. And, and so I'm thinking like, man, I am crushing this. Like I am really good at this. Uh, the problem is nobody's buying from me. And, uh, <laughs> and you're building awareness, but you're not building, right. but you're not building a, a, a bottom yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, so, deals aren't closing it's like there's all this momentum but uh, but no payoff and all this work to no to no payoff and then sort of phase 2 happens i get through this round of initial meetings and now i'm doing a lot of follow up calling people emailing people and nobody's responding hmm. and uh, and i i mean i literally was like i've been good in my life at everything i've ever done generally speaking not so much athletics, but vocationally, like whatever, I've done a lot of different stuff and I've found a way to be at least competent in everything that I've done. Sure. And, and I was like, I suck at this and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I'm having, uh, I'm having a bad time. And I was, I mean, I was almost like in a level of despair. I, uh, I used to, I, I would, I would fly out to this region uh, every other Monday morning and be there for four or five days. And then back in the office, uh, where I live for a week doing my other responsibilities. And I would, I would get to the airport on Monday mornings when I was flying out and I would have to like journal out a pep talk for myself. I'm not kidding. Wow. Like, yeah, like yeah. I, I mean, I was, I that. was struggling. And so, so then I ended up having. that's a, And that's a really good, like just to highlight that that's a good tip for anybody yeah. listening. If you're struggling, give yourself a pep talk. It sounds crazy, until you do it, That's and right. then you realize the power in that. It works, yeah. and I, it yes, it does. It, Absolutely, yeah. it, it works. It, it kept yes. me going, but I was not seeing results, and and that's when I I just happened to sit sure. next to somebody. Um, I was uh, at uh, when we got on the plane. I could hear the guy on the phone. I obviously knew he was some kind of sales training coach. I was a little bit too embarrassed. I kind of to talk to him, and uh, I kind of wanted to talk to him. And so I kind of made this agreement. If he talks to me, then I'll talk to him. And then about halfway through the flight, uh, he he chatted with me, and I just sort of dumped all this uh, on <laughs> awesome him. Enough. Like he, he didn't he didn't know what he was <laughs> right, getting for right, approved just, like, mentorship. All right, folks. If you're a professional service provider, are you ready to elevate your collaborative sessions? Let me introduce you to our sponsor, Miro, your ultimate tool for driving engagement in workshops, meetings, and all types of team collaborations. With Miro, every voice gets a chance to be heard. Thanks to their built-in voting functionality and the ability to time box discussions, gathering and organizing feedback has never been this fun and efficient. But that's not all. 
Forget the headache of syncing countless calendars. With Miro, you can easily share updates with your customers asynchronously, keeping them informed about new concepts, plans, or proposals. And say goodbye to those dull decks. With Miro's dynamic platform, your presentations get a makeover. Their frame and slides functionalities can transform your presentations, helping you win pitches with style. You get to choose from Miro's vast collection of a thousand plus community and Miro made templates for mind mapping, flowcharts, meeting agendas, research, design, icebreakers, and much more. Miro's also compatible with all the tools you're already using, from video conferencing to project management. With Miro's visual whiteboard, you can run meetings, take notes, track tasks, and foster effective collaboration. So why wait? Elevate your team's collaboration experience like never before. Try Miro today, and your first three Miro boards are free forever when you sign up. So sign up today at Miro.com slash podcast. Yep, that's right. M-I-R-O dot com slash podcast. And our thanks to Miro for sponsoring this episode. And listen, running a small business means forging partnerships from maintenance to HR. The partners you rely on make sure your business can succeed. And the best partners are the ones which can move with the flow of your business. And that's why you need our sponsor, Zinch, a direct lender tailored to small and medium sized businesses that makes loans simple, fast and flexible. And Zinch can approve up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars in under two days with Zinch. You don't have to wait months to be approved for a traditional bank loan. You know, whether you're dealing with a burst pipe that ruins machinery, the costs that come from expanding your workforce or a big bill you didn't expect, Zinch knows you have to act quickly and their specialists will help you choose the best solutions for your needs. There are no commissions or third party approvals, so Zinch can give you better rates, faster approvals and keep your info secure. Get financing the easy way with Zinch. And for a limited time, Zinch is waiving application fees for all of you, our business brain listeners. That's a $250 value. Just go straight to our special URL, financingthatworks.com. That's financingthatworks.com. Loans made or arranged pursuant to a California finance lender's law license. And our thanks to Zinch for sponsoring this episode. Yeah. Yeah. And I just like, Oh, here's everything that's going on and I don't know what I'm doing. And, uh, and he, he gave me a few uh, pieces of advice and then I've actually been engaged uh, with him uh, for the last four or five years (laughs) since then. So it's ended up being um, a long-term relationship. But, but one of the things he said to me was he started unpacking that uh, in sales being different is better than being better, and that and so that concept always stuck with me. And and so so the the underlying uh, part of it is that uh, certainly when you're selling to people, um, it's not just you and the person you're selling to in the room. It's it's you, the person you're selling to, and everybody who's sold to them before in the past. Mm, and yep. so. So it's a really good mm, point. So mm. they have an expectation. They have a script that's going in their minds and and they they have um uh, they've had a lot of guys coming in looking really nice and saying I'm the guy that can help you and throwing down their important business Making cards. Promises. Yeah. And taking them out to lunch and doing all these things and they've been let down by it. Right. And, and they've yeah. got defenses. Yeah. What, what makes you different than the, the last that's, four guys who that's let me right. down? Yeah. That's right. And so, so I just started trying to think about um, how can I do this differently? What did these people really need from me? So I started doing some simple things, which were addressing at the level that those guys did. Uh, I didn't tell them what my title was. I didn't give them my business card. I, I just started dropping uh, all of those things. And I started realizing um, that this was so hard for me to swallow. But when I did, it just shifted some things for me is that uh, they didn't want to be my friend. They wanted me to solve problems for them. And if I could make their life easier, then they would buy from me. Uh, and, And so that's what I started trying to focus on for me. And then for our, our sales team as a whole, as we started building and developing that was, um, 
we we don't win by um, giving some great presentation and you know looking the part and you know taking people out to dinner. We win by um, by taking things that are uh, a concern for people and taking them off their plate, right? Yeah, and I, I say, I, I, my sales business changed dramatically when we started prioritizing one thing and we tell our, our, our customers, you know, our job is to make your job as easy as possible. And once we started living that, yeah, everything right. opened and, and up that's, for us. That's the key. Uh, once you start living that, right. You can't yeah. just right. say it, right. right. You have to right. live it. Well, and, I think you alluded, it's like, when, when you say in here, it's like, I believe in what I'm selling. Our product is amazing. I've got years of customer feedback to confirm it. And you're like, and that's a problem. And, you know, it, instead of focusing, you assuming everybody needs what you sell and, and this kind of thing, but focusing on questions and coming back to that, how you're going to solve a problem for them. That's huge. And and the, the other thing that just shifted my world for me is the idea that uh, not everyone does need what I'm selling. And when I sit down with somebody, uh, I don't actually know until we've had a conversation, I've understood their world, whether or not that's the case. And that that it's a perfectly good outcome uh, from that meeting to determine that they don't need it. Yeah, because, that's cool. Because for both of us, that saves me because the, the death, the death, the, like the emotional death of the sales person is the <laughs> is I'm interested but then I can never get in touch with you again. Yeah, I can never yeah. follow up with you again. It goes off into a black hole. You don't know what happened. You don't know, do I give up and, and stop? But but I read all these. And you internalize said, it, right? As you, yeah. You think it's you. You think, what did I do wrong with this guy? You know. Yeah. I don't want to give up too early. I read these statistics yeah. that say it's 10 to 12 times or 20, whatever. You know, Brutal. I've only done three. I mean, you're doing all this internal math. And, and while you're doing that, um, a, it's it's uh, it's kind of self defeating, and you're losing momentum. Uh, and so that that's the thing that um, that I always tell people that I talk to in, anytime about sales. You know, friends and other companies who are trying to figure out how to work with their sales team is that sales comes down to two things: mindset and momentum, right? And so so <laughs> your your mindset has to be right as you're going into uh, into any kind of sales interaction. You have to understand um, uh, it's okay if I don't get this sale. No, no is a good outcome. You know, not finding out it's yeah, not yeah. a fit is a good outcome. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's a great outcome. Yep. You just save yourself a right, bunch more time. Right. You have to have a mindset that's not binary. That's the other thing that gets in the way I find so often yeah. with sales is that it's a, it's a binary mindset. Uh, a sale is success, not a sale is a failure. Right. And start. So, so there's these, uh, these things you have to just kind of understand mentally, just in managing yourself and the process. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's, it's all about mind yeah, hacks. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, so, and then, yeah. the, then the other piece of it is just how do I build and sustain momentum? And, yeah. and one of the yeah. ways that you, that you lose momentum is sitting around wondering what happened. You know, uh, I'm chasing this person yeah, down. Yeah. And so much of that gets solved by just having a good conversation with people that is genuinely focused on, I need to understand whether like what, what your world is and if this makes sense in your world or not. And it is okay if it yep. doesn't. Plus they respect that and it leads to other referrals and diff it's a whole different uh, type of relationship you have with that person. Yeah. And, it's a it's a relationship of confidence versus desperation. Yeah, right. I mean that like yeah. that that's one way to to sort of frame it is yeah. I'm confident in our product, but I don't know if you need yeah. it, and if you don't need it, it doesn't matter how great it is. Right. <laughs> yeah, no and point. people don't want to be sold to and told. Yeah. You know, I mean, no. this is the thing that happens that uh, I talk to my sales team about. I have to be aware of as well. Like uh, nobody wants to be told that they're stupid. Uh, in one form or fashion, right? Uh, they're using yep. this competitor product and people say, well, that's trash for this reason, that reason, yeah. this reason. What you've just done is you've told that person they're stupid for using that. And uh, like all of us, human nature, the first thing that you're going to do in response to that is is defend 
your reasons for using it, right? You're actually like selling for your competitor when you attack them right away. Right. And and yep. so so things like that 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 are just different than the way most people do it to say, um, man, you're using that competitive product. Uh, how's it going? Yeah. Uh, that's and great. if they say, man, it's going great to say, well, then good. But sometimes what I'll say to people is, uh, well, I, could you just answer one question for me? I'm a little bit confused. You agreed to take this meeting mm. with somebody selling oh. a competitive product, but you're, you're, everything's going great and you're perfectly happy with it. Why are we meeting? Yeah. I and, love it. That's good. And, <laughs> and then people will tell you all the things that they don't like about what they're using now. Yep. Right. But again, they're what they're what they're used to, if you just go in with a normal kind of standard sales approach, is I'm gonna beat up on this. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna tell you all the reasons why you should use my product and how smart you'd be for that. And That's if great. you if you approach it differently, people respond differently. Yep. And so, so, yeah, that's, so no, that's, that's, that's what really kind of transformed things for me. And then, you know, it wouldn't be a good story if, uh, if it ended with, uh, I still didn't sell stuff. Right. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's my guess is you started selling things at that point started to shift, right. Things started, people started yeah. buying. Um, and, and then all these other things happened like, I developed some good relationships with the people that wanted to have a relationship with me, nice. but I, I didn't need to have a relationship with customers anymore to, uh, to gauge my worth as a salesperson. And That's so, so then, so then there was more genuineness in the relationships that I did develop and it became okay with me. If, if, you know, I've had customers, I have customers that I have sold millions of dollars of product to that I've never met in person. And on the yep. inside of me, that violates every sometimes those are the best customers principle <laughs> that they're, you know, uh, and then, you know, and then the best thing that would happen, the way that my organization structured is that we have a field operations component that has to go install stuff. And the good customers would stop calling me at all. And they would just start calling my mm. operations guy and saying, Hey, I need you to come out and look at this job. I need you to come out and look at this job. And so, so, you know, then I learned actually the greatest position of being in sales is when you're not involved in selling anymore. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, no, you're just an order yeah, taker yeah, at yeah. that point. Yeah. 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 And Absolutely. I'm just, and yeah. I'm just kind of shepherding that relationship and staying in yep. touch. And, and, and my role is more, man, I just want to make sure that everything is going well. How can we, how yep. can we continue to take care of what you need and make your life easier? Terrific. Yep. I, I don't want to, I know so we smart. got a hard stop. I don't want to keep so you too smart. long today, but I, I, I do want to ask you one last question. So the, the, Concept behind now, I imagine you share this uh, always be different, you know, with your sales, you know, team and this kind of thing. Sharing it on Twitter, the impetus is that is uh, what behind that concept of getting it, getting it out there and sharing it with your followers. So, uh, like a lot of things, there's a very long story to to that. I was never a social media person really at all. I was er early adopter kind of on Facebook when that kind of opened up in the early 2000s, and then I said, forget this, I don't want to do this. Um, Never made sense to me. I uh, had a friend who started writing, who actually worked with me. He was writing on Twitter, growing a big audience. And, and you know, he just said to me uh, multiple times over the course of time, hey, this conversation that we just had sitting here in the office, if you would write that down, it would help people. Mm. And so, nice. uh, so eventually I just said, okay, I'll start. I'll, I'll try it and, and see what happens. And, uh, and so... Uh, so that that really was kind of the the beginning. I en I enjoy writing, and I, I think the thing that um, has been the most uh, kind of helpful for me is writing allows me. So just in my I have a I always just describe myself as having a very noisy head. So lots of stuff going on. Uh, lots of uh, kind of internal noise about I mean, everything from uh, positive stuff and ideas to 
the bombardment of self doubt and you suck at this and you you name it, you kind of name it. And there's something about the process of writing is kind of the journaling thing that I was talking about earlier. There's something about the process of writing that helps uh, kind of solidify uh, all of the kind of loose things that are floating around. And so, Hmm. so um, awesome. If if I can do that, it's kind of a little bit therapeutic for me and helps me, you know, bring some things into focus. And if it's helpful to other people, then uh, I find that to be a, a fun side benefit of that. Yeah, that's huge. It, it's a it's a win-win. awesome man. Well, I again, I really appreciate you coming on the show. I know our listeners will love it. Uh, if you haven't listened to uh, this episode four sixty six that we did a couple weeks ago, go back listen to that one again. Uh, we'll put links in the show notes, of course, to David's, uh, you know, Twitter or X feed and his LinkedIn profile and David, thanks again. And, uh, keep in touch, man. You got, it sounds like you have a lot of great stuff to share and, uh, we love sharing it. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. You bet. Well, that was, um, I I don't have to say that was great. It was great. Yeah. 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 Super lessons in there. Some, Some great lessons. Yeah. Uh, and, and just a real, like this happened to me and I made these changes and I had some success. Uh, make sure you go read the, the being different is better than being better tweet that we link in the show notes. Uh, this is some great lessons there from yeah. David and go follow David Morris too. We didn't ask him to tell uh, us all yeah. where you could find him, but we'll put his links in the show notes so that, uh, so that we can all follow him and, and take advantage of that. Thanks so much for listening, folks. Thanks so much for checking out our sponsors. Of course, Miro.com slash podcast, where you get your first three Miro boards for free. Financing that works.com. Save your 250 application fee. Keep living that charmed life, and we'll see you next time.